Hello everybody and welcome back to Blanche Case Fitness. It's Saturday and you know what that means. It's time for the weekend kickoff, our awesome strength and stamina focused body weight class and hair. <laughs> I'm so sorry I didn't get to show you all yesterday. I, um, I honestly, when I made this appointment, didn't even think about like getting back in time for, uh, for class or if I did, I was like, oh, well the appointment you know, is, is early enough that it should be fine. Not remembering that my hair appointments usually take a while because there's a lot to do here. So uh, I apologize for the last minute shift, but I hope that you were able to do the week one VOD, which is, you know, that's the program we would have been doing anyway. So you've got to do the exact thing that we would have been doing anyway. But uh, yes, I, I must admit, I'm very glad that I took that time for myself yesterday because I feel about a hundred pounds lighter without all the hair <laughs> on my head. And I got to impress my stylist with how, uh, how good the green still looked after, God, eight months, I think. Something ridiculous since the last time I got to, you know, have a hair appointment. Like... She'd moved to a new studio. I'd started a new job. I'd moved houses like since I last, I, God, time has no meaning. But anyway, hi, welcome to the weekend. Um, because of this, because I don't want to be like sweating a ton, I'm going to be uh, taking it a little easy today uh, as a nice lead in to my rest week. And let me tell you, I'm excited. I am very excited. And I actually spent a little time this morning uh, setting up my calendar to remind myself of when I need to take rest weeks. And not all of them will be full streaming rest weeks. Most of them, in fact, won't be. Most of them, I'll still be streaming like normal. I'll demonstrate exercises, but I won't do the full class with you. Um, but I'll, the streaming schedule will still be as usual. Um, I think maybe once or twice a year is when I'll do the full, like, I am offline um, rest week. And uh, it will probably usually coincide with the end of a full programming month um, because those are intensive and uh, it's nice to be able to take a little bit of a break. But it felt really good. It felt really good to set that up and to just remind myself of how necessary it is um and you know to remind myself that it is okay for me to take my rest just as seriously as i take my exercise um because we need that rejuvenation we need that rejuvenation and you know it's not like, I, and I talked about this a few classes ago, like it's not like I'm not gonna be moving all of next week. I'm gonna be going for walks every day and like keeping that in my schedule. And I've already been, you know, working on how to adjust my energy levels with the addition of daily walks. So this will give me an opportunity to do a little more of that work. And also to hopefully be able to take some of that extra time and extra brain space um, and think about what the next steps for the channel are gonna be. Uh, I think I'm definitely going to, uh, starting not during my rest week, but the week after, change the time of functional home fitness on Fridays. Move it a little bit earlier, uh, just because 6 p.m is uh is a little later than i want to be teaching um and you know as we actually maybe oh my gosh have the opportunity to spend time with other people crazy i know i uh i want to <laughs> i want to give myself the opportunity to uh to um not you know be teaching until like 7 15 7 30 at night so uh i think what I will do, and I'll sort of make an official post about this, but I think that functional home fitness will be moved to 5 p.m. on Friday. So it'll be moved a whole hour earlier, um, mountain time, always. You know, y'all know that at this point. And, uh, and we'll just see how that feels. The other thing I may do, 
I, I may futz around with the with the days and times uh, with the days that different classes are on. I'm not positive on that yet, um, but uh, yeah, I just wanna I wanna you know give myself the flexibility and give us the flexibility as a community to be like, are these times working for us? Like. Uh, or should we shift things around? So if you have any feedback, feel free to send it to me. Now's the time. But the one thing I am definitely going to do is move functional home fitness earlier. So, so all of the, all of the afternoon, uh, early evening classes will be around the same times, um, you know, between 4.30 and 5.45. So it's not a huge, and honestly, that's the other thing I may do. I may shift, um, perpetual motion to 5.30 instead of 5.45. 5.45 is such a weird time. <laughs> such a weird time to do class. Um, and the reason that I did it was because it was in line with the evening class that I used to teach uh, at the BRC while they still had fitness classes. Um, but I don't have to do that anymore. This is my channel. I can do whatever I want. So <laughs> um, yeah, so I may shift that around. Um, but yeah, I, I think over, over the next week, what I really want to do is sort of, I want to figure out my camera setup because I do have a really nice camera that can, you know, be prettier and fancier, uh, and, you know, be a better quality of video <laughs> for these glasses, which I don't think anyone would take amiss. Um, and I also want to start actually making some YouTube content. Uh, and I, I've, I've been talking about this for months at this point and, you know, always had sort of some reason why I was pushing it off. So if I can at the very least get comfortable using the camera and feel, feel like, okay, I know how to use it. And then I can build out a plan for, for, uh, okay, let me let me shoot uh, a video on a warm up sequence. Let me shoot a video, a form video for an exercise. Uh, you know, and start building out that content that we've been talking about for a while. And just because life is life, and you know, twenty twenty one is itself, and twenty twenty was itself, like. <laughs> things things get pushed off and uh and you know again talking about energy i haven't necessarily had the energy to figure this stuff out so that's my hope for next week is that i'll really get to hunker down and and dig into some of the stuff that we've been talking about for a while that i'm really excited to do and that i really want to kick off and i just need to um give myself the time and the space and the energy to do a little more planning on it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to next week. And the beautiful thing is of course that there are so many VODs and I'll definitely be scheduling posts with VODs linked. Um, I'm not sure if I can do watch parties as an affiliate, I might be able to. So I might see if I can hook that up um, so that you could still come to the Twitch channel uh, and you know, watch the VOD through that. I'm not, I'm not positive on that, but that might be something that we do rather than just tweeting out a link. But, um, there will still be plenty of content, uh, that you are able to do, which is great and is the whole point of putting the VODs on YouTube so that you're able to actually go back and redo stuff. So yeah, yeah, I am, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think that, uh, this is going to be a good week. It's going to be a very needed week for me. Um, I can tell I need the rest because my shoulder has definitely been fussing at me all week. Uh, and uh, it hasn't done that in a while. <laughs> but yeah, we are going to go through 2021 and we are going to make sure that we are being healthy and taking care of ourselves and honoring our need for rest just as much as we honor our need for exercise because they go hand in hand. They absolutely go hand in hand. And it's very important to remember that. Um, but for now, let me turn on my speaker. That'll be useful. Hey, hey, yay. Good to see you in chat. Thank you for resubscribing my dear. 
I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, we're, we're talking about the importance of rest, which obviously has been very much on my mind, but uh, we're also getting ready to kick off class. Thank you. Yeah, see, I, uh, I think it was worth having to um, last minute cancel stream because I am so happy. And it also like, there's like 20 pounds of hair that are no longer on my head. Yes. Uh, all right, so that's on. And we're doing week one of April Powers. So this is our last class that we're doing this. Circling back to the first week, I highly recommend getting hair chopped off. It feels amazing. Um, so we're circling back to week one so that you can compare how you're feeling at the end of all that ramping up to how you felt on that program in the very first week. Uh, and I love doing this because it's a really cool opportunity for us to go, oh, wow, I have really improved. That's awesome. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to be doing class super intensely today because uh, today is a day when the color needs to settle. <laughs> so just consider this me starting my rest week slightly early, but it's okay. Oh my God, you're gonna have a whole eight minutes back for those pyramids, my God. But before we get to pyramids, we have to do our pre-class checklist. So you got your water in whatever vessel you're carrying it in. Mm. You've got your comfy clothes, whatever that means to you, your mat or mat size space on the floor. And if you use a fitness wearable, now's the time to turn them on to high intensity interval training. Hiya. I don't know why I'm turning my on. My, my watch is going to be like, are you sure you're working out? I'll be like, well, that's fair. That's fair. Um, oh, friends, April Powers was intense. It was a lot of fun. And now we're going to close out our association with it, going strong, uh, and just seeing how it feels. You know, we had gotten those pyramids down to six and a half minutes. So see how it feels when you have a whole eight minutes to do that. Uh, I'm betting that you'll be like, ooh, that's pretty impressive. Um, all right, well, let's start with our warm up. Da, da, da. Hey, uh, oh my goodness, yeah. There we go. Uh, all right, everybody is ready, is raring. It's Sunday. No, it's not. It's Saturday. Where am I? What's... Oh, time is not meaning. It's Sunday? I don't even teach on Sundays. Okay. That's fine. On your mats, on your backs, one foot cross over the opposite knee. And as soon as that horn goes off, we will begin with hip rocks and bridges. <sighs> there we go. So, I'm going to talk about on the days when I don't do classes intensely. You know what I do. I talk about a form all the time. So, for our hip rocks and bridges, engaging that core and contracting it is actually a really important part of this exercise because we're not just pushing off of the floor. That just that only gets us so far. It doesn't really get our hips off the floor. So, what I want you to do is just really small contraction of the abdominal muscles. And that lifts the hips up in the air. And then when you put that standing foot back down on the floor, you come up to the ball of the foot before you do the bridge. And that just allows you to bridge up a little higher when you have your, because uh, when you have your other leg over your knee, it just, I can't get my hips up quite as high uh, as I would normally. So I come up to the ball of the foot, that lets me bring my hips up a little bit higher. And then contract, and now we switch sides. All the same things apply. Enjoy the hip stretch that you're getting. That's one of my favorite parts about this exercise is the sneaky hip stretch. Because as we lift the hips up, we pull this whole leg apparatus closer to our chest. And in a very similar way to uh, like a pigeon stretch in yoga or that pretzel stretch that we do, um, you just get a little bit of a hip stretch. It's a nice active stretch, a way to, even before we get to the section of the warm up where we're opening up our hips and our backs, 
uh, start to warm that area up and just get it used to, hey, we're moving, all right? But you're still contracting those abdominals to lift those hips up and then bridging and remembering too that this is the warm up, so you don't have to fling your hips up as high in the air as you can go, all right? Okay, now for our Jane Fonda's nice straight line of the body, right? Um, and if you have difficulty feeling like how to get into that position or being confident that you are, then use the long edge of your mat, okay? It's a really, it's a perfect marker. And you set yourself up along it and you go, okay, well, I must be in a fairly straight line and then start to memorize how this feels, how it feels to be in this position and to be like, okay, this is how it feels to be lying in a straight line. And as you put that into your muscle memory, then eventually you can get into that position without needing the edge of the mat. And then you can just be like, all right, I'm doing it. I feel comfy. All right, top foot flat on the floor, in front of that bottom knee, lifting the bottom leg. Um, and, you know, we talk all the time about the knee positioning. It's super important to use this time to really practice that safe knee positioning. So if I was standing up, this knee would move forward directly over my foot. It's not caving in. And it's not the end of the world if it's caving in here because we're not putting any standing pressure on it and this is not going to be too terrible for your knee. But by that same token, this is where we wanna practice. This is where we wanna get the sense of, okay, this is how it feels to engage those muscles at the back of my hip joint, help pull the knee back and keep it safely in place. This is where we practice that so that when it does become important, we already have that muscle memory built up. All right, and then our beach position. Oh yeah, we love how chill that is, don't we? <laughs> and we really don't need to worry too much about the positioning because we're not, uh, the, our balance is pretty well managed here. We're not having to pull our knee back in the same way as when we have the leg in front of the leg. This is a much more natural position. We're not worrying about the hips rolling back or forth because they're just at this diagonal and they can just sort of chill there. So we get to focus in and just pay attention to what muscles are engaging as we lift this leg. Obviously the inside of the thigh, but we also get a little engagement coming up here at the bottom of the abdominals. And that's not something you necessarily notice all the time. So just a nice opportunity for us to be like, all right, what's actually happening in our bodies? Uh, in my body as I'm trying to do this exercise. So other side, all the same thing. So how does it feel to get into this straight line position? Did it feel easier on the second side because you did that initial work with the measure on the first side? Or did it feel about the same? Did you still need the edge of the mat? Either thing is fine. Either thing is fine. Remembering too, as we lift the leg, we want that to still stay in that straight line. We don't want the leg drifting forward, but we don't want to overcompensate and pull it back behind us. So I always talk about as you lift the leg, just engage the glutes, not pull back with them, but just sort of contract them just that little bit. And that helps to keep the leg in line with the body without pulling it too far back, which is definitely an overcorrection that I used to do before I finally went, hang on, this, this doesn't seem right. Okay. And now second side for that foot flat on the floor in front of that bottom knee and check on how it feels different in the hips. You know, I talk a lot about how my right hip is much stiffer. It's less flexible than my left hip. So I have to put a lot more energy into pulling that knee back. Otherwise it really does just wanna sort of cave forward like that. And I don't want it to do that. So you may feel like this position is easier on this side, or you may feel like 
it's harder. And that is totally normal either way because we are not symmetrical creatures. Ha! <laughs> yes, I say that all the time. And uh, yes, it's, I'm going to say it until the end of time because it's very easy for us to be like, we're supposed to be symmetrical. And it's like, no, no, when you get down to it, we really aren't. And that's okay. All right, and back to that beach pose. For the foot on the working leg, again, I don't generally feel super strongly about it. I, I tend to go somewhere between a loosely flexed foot and basically a neutral foot. If you can also point the foot, obviously, keeping in mind that if you're flexing or pointing, you are actively engaging some additional musculature in the leg. So if I'm flexing, then I'm really feeling that engagement in my quad or in my calves and shins. Same thing if I'm pointing. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're like, huh, my leg feels a little bit more worn out than I would expect it to. It's just because you have that little extra bit of engagement. Uh, whereas if I keep the, the foot, you know, just sort of neutral, that I, I don't have that experience. And I'm fine either way. It's not, I'm not worried about that. It's not integral to the exercise one way or the other. All right, scorpion twists. Arms planted, forearms planted on the ground. One leg swinging back as far as it can go. We're trying to get the foot flat on the floor and we're trying to get that knee pointing up towards the ceiling, but we are not letting our elbows or forearms come off the ground for any reason, okay? So if you can only get here and you're like, well, but if I just flip that, no, you're not there yet and that's fine, okay? And you may be able to get farther on the other side or not as far, again, not symmetrical. But having your forearms planted gives you a really nice guide to where the flexibility in your back is and also helps you to better notice as it improves. So yeah, keep that in mind. Hey, yeah. All right. And now we come up for our torso rotations. So we're holding our imaginary PVC pipe above our heads, just because that's what I used to do in in-person classes. So we're still doing that and turn the torso slightly to one side and then bend over from the hips. So I'm not moving the arms. I'm not diving down with my head. I'm basically taking a flat back down and my back will curve a little bit at the bottom of this as I just sort of relax it over, come through that circle and then up. And generally I'll do two rotations in one direction and then turn around and go the other way because uh, we only do this for one timer. So you wanna make sure that you're evening yourself out and not just going in the one direction and then like, oh man. All right, and now still holding the imaginary pipe, we go into our squat. So this is our first opportunity to check in on our knees after that work that we were doing in the leg sequence. So as you squat down, you want your knees to be going straight forward over your feet, okay? Not caving in towards each other. And that goes for as you stand as well. So if you are feeling that caving at any point, even, you know, you get down into this position fine, and then as you try to stand up, they kind of start trying to press together. Narrow your stance, practice there. Okay, cool, I can hold that knee positioning more effectively that whole time. And then, as you get more used to that, then you can get back out to the wider position and be like, okay, how does that feel? That feels better. All right. Uh, now for our Samson stretches. Oof. Uh, and this is such a good stretch, such a good active stretch to do just in your general life because we spend so much time sitting in front of computers and not moving our hips around. Or if you're a retail worker, you may spend a ton of time standing uh, and not really moving around. And both of those things are 
<laughs> are stressful for our hips, okay, in different ways. We have this sort of mythology that standing is innately better than sitting, and that's not how it works. Doing either standing or sitting for super extended periods of time, it, it's bad for your body both ways, just in different ways. So that's why with standing desks, you want to make sure that you also have uh, a seated setup so you can alternate between the two. But uh, our Samson stretches are just a great stretch to help open up the hips. All right, and then we come down to our wide squat position. I've got my hands on my knees and I'm just bringing one shoulder in towards the midline at a time. So we're getting that, we got the twist in our lower to mid back with the scorpions. And now we're getting a little bit of a twist in the upper spine, okay? And the only things that should be moving are your shoulders. So we're not bouncing up and down out of this wide squat position. And one thing to really check on is as you bring a shoulder and you don't want that knee, again, we don't want our knees trying to cave forward, okay? So only the shoulders, the twisting, and now it's jumping jack time. And remember we're doing bare minimum jumping jacks. So even though this is the cardio section, we don't need to be going, ah, ah, okay, now I'm at 100%. You don't have to be at 100% yet. So I will generally keep my elbows pretty bent. Now I'm taking pretty small jumps all right, I'm not really taking my feet too far apart from each other. So this is just our opportunity to start engaging our cardiovascular system a little more intensely. This is the final key that we need to turn to boot up these systems, get our heart rate going a little faster, our breathing coming a little bit faster, just letting that whole system know, oh, okay, we're gonna be using more oxygen right now than baseline. So I need to breathe a little faster to bring that oxygen in more quickly. And I need my heart to beat a little bit faster to move it through the body more quickly. And now, kick throughs, everybody's favorite. Oh man, kick throughs are so intense. So always remember that you can go as slowly as you want to really make sure that you are hitting all of the positions. And honestly, I do these fairly slowly because I want to be able to move the whole time. That's my goal. And I can, but I'm still working up to being able to move the whole time and speed up the activity. So eventually, you can get to a place where you're jumping back and forth, just like this. But if you're not there yet, don't push yourself, okay? Again, we start with our form. Our form is the foundation from which we do everything else in this class. Last but not least, burpees. Hands down, jump back to that plank, but then we do a wave push up. Jump those feet forward, hi -ya. And less important in the warm up, but when we do burpees, at other times in class, you want to try to do that last jump from as close to the ground as possible. So not standing up and then going, hey, but more like a frog jump, getting that additional bit of power and force from, uh, from the jump. So, but yeah, burpees, closing out that warm up. I used to, really despise burpees. And uh, they've grown on me. They've grown on me over the years. So hopefully they will grow on you as well. They'll never be my favorite thing to do, but they're not bad. All right, good job, everybody. And now we get some water. Ah, yeah, my hair is just going all over the place. Oh, so happy with it, that one's, yep, yep. Perfect, exactly what I wanted. Mm. Yeah. The hair appointments are like the one place that I really uh, like to pamper myself. 
and that's why I don't go that often. <laughs> but I have had an amazing stylist for the last three or four years. I can't remember when I started going to her, but <sighs> she's been great and it's really wonderful. All right, make sure you're drinking that water, my friends. I'll be drinking water along with you, even though I'm not running through it at the same rate. I like this though. This is another reason why it's good for me to do rest weeks uh, more regularly is it reminds me to really dig in on some of this form stuff. And y'all know me, I try to talk about form as much as I can, uh, but I do like, especially with the warm up, which is something we do every single class, frequently I'll get distracted and I'll be talking about, you know, stuff happening in the world or a movie I just watched or what have you. And it's really nice to have, uh, have a class where I'm like, no, I'm just gonna really hunker in and talk about the form of all of this stuff because all I'm doing right now is demonstrating and that takes a lot less overall energy than doing class and talking and trying to remember to talk about form all the time. So, remember week one? Remember week one of April powers? We started with our pyramid. We have three pyramids today and two perpetual motion sets. And our pyramids are gonna be eight minutes long. It's an eternity. We got it down to six and a half, my friends. Eight minutes, you got this. So, our three exercises for the pyramids. We've got those knee crunches, so bouncing up on your tailbone, turn the knees to one side, and then engage the abdominal, the obliques right here, to pull the knees closer to your chest, then let them out a little bit, turn them to the other side, and opposite, okay? And remember that because you're going back and forth, you're gonna to have to do even numbers of reps, okay? So instead of 21, 15, 10, you have to do 22, 16, 10, okay? Uh, so knee crunches, the first exercise. Squat jumps is our second exercise. So we want those feet to be about shoulder width apart. So it's a fairly wide uh, squat position. And we just take that small squat down, like 45 degree angle, I'm not, going like all the way down there or anything and jump 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 etc etc again it's still important to make sure that the knees are not caving in towards one another okay and then uh side to side planks which just like the knee crunches you've got to do even numbers of reps we take our plank one side here through the center to the other side. All right. So everybody back on your mat. 21, 15, 10. Take whatever breaks you need to. You've got eight total minutes and they start right now, okay? And uh, I'm not gonna do all the reps, so I'll just talk about the exercises as we go. So you're starting with these knee crunches, which I really love because you really get to see how the uh, abdominals can shrink that distance and are legitimately pulling my knees in towards my chest. Like you normally would think that you wanted to use your quads for that, but if you just really shorten that distance there, contract those obliques down, it does the work for you. And it's a really good exercise to really hunker in and pay attention to, am I actually using my core to do this core exercise or am I compensating with a different muscle group? And it's not gonna hit the sort of inner and outer abdominals as much. This is really, really focused in on the obliques, okay? So just keep that in mind. You're gonna feel it most along the side, right there. That's where you should be feeling the muscle engagement. And if you're not, then take a step back and pay attention to what muscles you do feel engaging, okay? Because nine times out of 10, it's probably that you're not using the right muscles to 
generate the movement. And that's a totally normal thing. Happens to me all the time. Um, so this is not, you know, me getting down on you. Or it's like, it is a very common thing that we all have to work through. But it's a good thing to pay attention to. And then our squat jumps, they're a relatively simple exercise. You know, we want to pay attention to our feet placement. We want to pay attention to our knees, making sure that as we push up and then get back into this squat position, and you want to land and be going back into the squat at the same time. So you don't want to land on straight legs, straight knees, and then go down in the squat. If you're doing that, then you're probably locking your knees in the air, and that's not going to be good for them. So you want to be able to jump and immediately go back down into that squat position. And again, I say this all the time, there are very few exercises where, and I can't think of any, where I would say, yeah, don't worry about your core. So core engagement here, really useful. When we come down in the squat, we don't want to be hunching over or letting our lower back relax. So keeping that engagement in the core helps to maintain that flat back position. So like this, rather than releasing and letting ourselves sort of uh, and then try and throw ourselves up into the air, okay? And then our side to side planks, which is an exercise we do a ton because A, I love it, and B, it's really good for helping us to work on strength and stability in our shoulders. It's not an exercise that we want to be rushing through the reps, okay? Um, we're not trying to go and and because we want to make sure that the shoulder is engaged, it's pushing away from the floor, we're not sinking down into the shoulder, and it's stable, it's not wobbling around, we're not worrying about the anything happening to that ball and socket joint, reaching up in the air. You want to pause for a second, let the judges see it, all right? And then back through that front plank and to the other side, same thing, all right? But this is an opportunity for us to really hone in and pay attention to the work that our shoulders can and do need to put in to being strong and to being stable and to not always maintaining that huge range of motion, okay? And they're designed specifically to have a huge range of motion and it's very useful, but they also need to be able to strengthen, to stabilize, to hold safely. And when we don't train people in that importance, that's when we end up with a lot of shoulder injuries. We just don't think about the impact that we're having on them. And we don't think about the impact that they can have on different exercises that we do. And, you know, shoulder injuries are insanely common. Um, I said this before, but last year, I had not one but two friends who had to get shoulder surgery. And it was not the first shoulder surgery for either of them, you know? So I focus in on that a lot because of my own shoulder issues, but also because it's an area that we don't put enough focus on. Particularly, honestly, if you're used to doing activities that are more body weight focused. So I've been a dancer for most of my life and um, I don't remember ever really like intensively focusing in on shoulder stability, you know? And there's a lot that you pick up just uh, intuitively, um, you know, after that many years of work, but intuition only gets you so far. And part, the other part of the problem is when you then move into other activities that do require, you know, more equipment or like free weight exercises, then you don't understand the importance of that shoulder stability, which is how I ended up with this. So just lots of things to think about. All right, my friends, ooh, you have a minute and a half left. 
And I'm willing to bet that most of you are actually totally through all of your reps. So you do your 21, you do your 15, and hopefully you did or are doing your 10. And remembering, of course, you can take whatever breaks you need in between the exercises. And frankly, if you're doing an exercise and you need a rest in the middle of that set before you finish off all the reps, you can do that too. I want you to be aware of what that may mean because taking a rest mid-set is not always the, oh, now the rest of this feels so much easier that we hope it's going to be. But again, form, that's our foundation. And if you are going along and you're like, I can't keep pushing through these reps, I have to take a quick break before I finish them or I'm just gonna lose the form completely, then listen to that, pay attention to that, and do it, okay? Because uh, that is far more important than getting through all 21 reps at first. Uh, yay, joining in on the floor, awesome. Well, you've got eight more seconds to finish off this first pyramid. Woo, woo, woo. <sighs> All right, and we're done. And now we are on a rest. How did that feel? Eight minutes feels so long, which is wonderful. And like, but this is what we notice, right? When you have more time, you take the longer breaks, obviously, because you have the time to do it. And as we shorten the amount of time, that forces us to challenge ourselves a little bit more and be like, okay, maybe I can do these a little bit quicker in succession than I thought I could. Um, and I know I impressed myself last week with those six and a half minute sets. I was like, oh my God. Uh, so hopefully you did as well and hopefully you enjoyed getting that extra minute and a half back. <laughs> uh, all right, my friends, make sure you're drinking some water. Mm. And then we will do our first perpetual motion set back to 30 second work intervals. Yes. All right. So the two exercises, remember we've got our alternating one leg squat. So taking a super wide position, feet turned out. They don't have to be turned out super wide because you still want to make sure your knees can go straight over the foot. So if you need to turn them in a little bit more, that's totally fine. And we bend one knee down and come all the way down here. So it's fully, fully bent. This leg is fully extended. And then push back up to the starting position and down to the other side. And then we just go back and forth. We get a nice little uh, stretch in the inner thigh there, which is really nice. And we just go back and forth. And then the other exercise is our front plank from the elbows. So making sure that the shoulders are directly over the elbows. We got that nice perpendicular line. Everything else is just a nice straight line. And we're just chilling here. Uh, all right. So 30 second work intervals and no rest intervals because it's a perpetual motion timer. So everybody head back to your mat. And as soon as you hear that horn, start with those squats, okay? Oh, there we are. And this is definitely one where I can turn my feet out super far, but I've started turning them in a little bit more closely because it's easier for me to maintain the knee position when I'm not trying to turn my toes, you know, all the way out from one another. And that's something to pay attention to. Just because you can hit a specific position does not mean that you have to, all right? And now, as we come into these planks, the main thing is not, again, we want these shoulders strong and stable. We don't want to be sinking down. We want them pushing away from the floor, okay? And breathing the whole time. So not over here being like, okay, well, this is a held position, so I need to hold my breath too. You need that oxygen. Keep breathing. All right. Round two. <laughs> yeah, these alternating one-legged squats are intense. 
I really enjoy them because I feel like, and I haven't tested this theory yet because I've always been absolute crap at pistol squats, but I feel like this is one way to sort of work your way up towards the concept of the pistol squat. Just being used to, all right, this one leg is controlling everything about that movement. Oh, and now back, back to our clients. 30 seconds is so luxurious. You're just like, yeah, I can do 30 seconds, no problem. And uh, that's really, <laughs> that's really the secret of these programs is everything is intense when you do it for, you know, 45 seconds to a minute. So just getting back around to, oh, 30 seconds, that's nothing. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to sit back, relax, and really just enjoy that feeling. Uh, man, what beautiful weather. It's uh, some ridiculous, yeah, 70 degrees already. Oh my goodness. I'm going to be outside for a bit. Make sure you're wearing sunscreen. We're back in the sunscreen era of time, at least if you live in the United States. And if you live in the Colorado area, uh, then you really need to be wearing sunscreen because, oh boy, we don't have nearly as much atmosphere up here protecting us from the day star. So <laughs> make sure that you are taking care of yourself. Skin, skin care, super important, just as important as rest, just as important as exercise. All right, last set. So going back and forth, and you want to make sure that you're maintaining a flat back. So again, I've got my core engaged so that when I come down here, I'm not hunching over. All right. And then exhale on the effort, gets me back up to here. And then I come back down and back up. I don't get to exhale on the effort that much when I'm demonstrating for you because I'm trying to talk the whole time, but it is such a good tool especially for something like that. And then our last round of planks. Again, check in. Are you sinking down? Re-engage, push those shoulders away from the floor, okay? You wanna make sure you're maintaining that. You do not wanna feel the shoulders sort of coming up towards the ears. Strong, stable, they can do it. They absolutely have the capacity. They just need a little assistance. All right. Good job, everybody. Look at that. Just a nice, quick little perpetual motion set. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Ah. <laughs> Yay, water. Oh, water is so good. Let's give a round of applause to water. I know I do this all the time, but it's so important. So important. Fitness friend says hydrate, please. <sighs> All right. So we have our next pyramid. Still eight minutes. Crazy. I know, but we've got this. And three new exercises. So we've got our flaming scarlets. If you need to modify, if you have shoulder issues that make holding your arms above your head like this difficult, high knee runs. I love it. All right. But assuming you could do this, We've got our arms in a V for victory, and I'm just jumping back and forth, one foot to the other, trying to get those knees up above the crease in the hips, okay? And barring that, just getting them up as high as you can go, really pushing on that. And for these, even though you're going back and forth because of how quickly you're moving, we count a single rep as one, two, three, etc., etc. So you only have to do 21, 15, 10, okay? Second exercise, push-ups. Good old push-ups. Y'all know the drill in this. You can do them from the wall. You can do incline push-ups off a piece of furniture. You can do our plank push-up like that. You can do from the knees like that. You can do part plank, part wave, full wave, whatever you wanna do. Just make sure that shoulders are directly over wrists so you've got that nice 
perpendicular line. Wait, there it is. <laughs> and that your elbows are staying nice and pinned in towards your sides, not fanning out away from each other, okay? And then TikToks are our last exercise. So balancing up on the tailbone in this pike position, arms straight, hands together to one side of the knees. Extend out only as far as you need to to bring those arms to the other side and then contract the abdominals to pull yourself back up to that pike. Down and up, down and up, etc., etc. Alrighty? So, Flaming Scarlet's push ups and TikToks. Everybody, get on your mats. Eight minutes starts now. And our Flaming Scarlet's are. Uh, I, they're fun to do in a pyramid setting because yes, they're hard, but they're such a fast moving exercise that you really get through 21 reps super quickly, you know? All I, you're just one, two, three, four, and you can really push yourself for a little more speed. You can sprint a little bit harder because 21 reps actually isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. And then you're done and you're like, ooh, that was easy. Uh, now on to push-ups, which uh, all of y'all know, I love push-ups so much, but they're really intense, okay? And uh, it's one of the things, it's an exercise that always reminds me how good body weight exercise is. You do not need to be lifting super heavy things in order to be getting an amazing strength-based workout. This Freaking exercise, I'm maintaining my shoulders directly over wrists. I'm keeping those elbows in by my side to really focus on the triceps and then pushing back up. That exercise, boy, that is doing work, okay? So anybody who ever is like, oh, well, body weight workouts, like you can't really, how much can you really get from that? A lot! You can get so much from body weight workouts, my friends. And uh, it drives me crazy that there are these little pockets of fitness folks who are judgmental about it. I just, you know, I suppose humans always find ways to be judgmental, but I'm like, why? 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 It's such a great workout. It is such a great workout. And exercises like push-ups remind us of how powerful and intense it can be. I've been doing this for how long? And they still feel intense to me. You know? I love it. I love it. And then we got our TikToks, which is the OG core exercise that I, uh, I started teaching with. And just making sure that we're not extending all the way out. You don't need to go that far, but you need to go far enough that you don't feel like you have to either bend at the elbows or lift the hands over the knees, okay? So that's about as far as I need to go. And my fingertips, you know, are brushing against my knees and that's fine, and that's fine. You will also, you will feel engagement in other muscle groups because obviously, you know, our core is not out there just doing its own thing. So it's an intense exercise, but you want to make sure whew, that the pulling back up to the pike really is generated by the core, not generated by pulling the legs closer with the quad set. Whew, all right, it's that contraction, it's just like those knee crunches, that pulls the entire apparatus back together. And we do need to focus on that a lot when we're first learning these exercises to really pay attention to what is the muscle group I'm using, okay? Oh man, you haven't even hit four minutes yet. Y'all are fine. You've got this, oh my gosh. Uh, but yeah, pyramids, Pyramids are one of my favorite sort of exercise structures. I, uh, I really enjoy them. I just think that they, I think that they uh, give us 
an opportunity to sort of get the best of both worlds in terms of we can sprint a little bit because we're not doing a ton of reps so we can push for a little bit more speed but we also have fuller control over how we're using the bulk of the time and what percentage is rest and what percentage is reps and we can play around with that so it's just it's a structure that gives you the student a little bit more uh, control and engagement over how how you're structuring everything and like that's really awesome that's really awesome because a lot of times it's just me up here telling you exactly what to do sometimes literally when we do those uh, super guided sets yeah the super guided sets where I'm just like this is the rhythm that you're performing the exercise on and I don't do that often that's a very extreme example but you know most of the time we have a very set period of time for moving and a very set period of time for resting and uh, and that's just how it is so it's nice to give you a little bit more control over the structure um, and it helps to really drive home the ways that we can impact the intensity of the exercise just by how we are balancing rest to performing the exercise itself you know how we are balancing how how quickly we go through the reps versus how much time we take before we start the next exercise and you know making that decision over and over again and that has such a huge impact on how intense overall the pyramid is going to be and one of the reasons that we keep ratcheting back the amount of time that you have overall to do the pyramid is that as you get better at sort of blasting through everything well now you don't need the so much extra rest time at the end now you don't need that extra time you can fill that time with more exercise and so, and so reducing the amount of rest time is one of the ways that we start to up our challenge ratings one of the ways that we start to uh, increase our intensity improve our strength our power our stamina etc uh, that's one of the things that we look at when we're like all right I wanna I wanna push forward I wanna I wanna challenge myself a little bit more uh, all right Ooh! oh gift subs yeah <laughs> oh my goodness pyramids pyramids are so fun Pyramids are so fun. I really, I really like that structure. And I didn't remember it for a while when I started teaching. And then when it finally came back into my brain, I was like, oh yeah, this is really cool. I want to start doing that again. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for gifting a sub, my dear. Eight minutes is so luxurious. This is what I'm saying. You have so much time. So much time. You've got 30 seconds left before we go into our rest two minutes. Like, you've got this. You've got this, friends. Have, oh my God. And then we do have another perpetual motion set and then one more pyramid, but you are golden. Oh, all right, 15 seconds left. So anybody finishing off those, uh, those last 10 rep sets? Just know, now you have five seconds. Three, two, one. All right, and now it's rest time. Yeah, and you know, I try to vary the amount of time that I give for the pyramids. I generally, most of the time, I will err on the side of being a little more conservative about how much time I give, just because I wanna make sure that, uh, the class is as accessible as possible and if you're you know brand new to the class trying to get that pyramid done in six and a half minutes is like like it's hard enough for those of us who've been taking class for ages like you know um so i generally don't do those major like ratcheting down the amount of time uh except when we're doing month-long programming and then we can play around with it a little bit more because then we have you know a progression that we're making oh all right our next perpetual motion set two more exercises 
Huzzah. And let's see here. Uh, so 30 seconds work intervals again. Our two exercises this time, we've got wall sit. Let me show it from over here. Uh, we've got wall sit. So trying to do those nice 90 degree angles. Ow, that was bookcase. 90 degree angles here and here. Just chilling. Do, do, do. Uh, and then second exercise is shrimps. Yeah. So there's a little bit of throwing yourself all over the room to get from the wall down to the mat so that you can do the shrimps. We're moving back and forth along the mat. And if you've never done shrimps before, start just with this little boat rock right here. I'm engaging the core, contracting it to round my lower back so I can sort of rock back and forth. And I'm just envisioning that every time my shoulders come off the ground, I move them to the side. Same thing with the hips. And through that, I am able to just move back and forth along the mat. All righty? So, 30 second work intervals, wall sits and shrimps. Oh, everybody get ready. Where'd that timer go? There it is. Everybody get ready and get set. And go! <laughs> uh, so, um, this is going to feel very luxurious for the wall sits. 30 seconds is nothing. We were up to a minute last week. Um, so, this is having that amount of time, which is always a relief to me. But if you do start to feel like vibration in your quads, don't worry, that's totally normal. They're working really hard. Um, probably means that there's room for them to strengthen a little bit, but you know, don't freak out that something wrong is happening. Now when we do our shrimps, make sure that you're moving your hips in a similar distance to moving your shoulders because your shoulders just physiologically can't go as far laterally as your hips can. And if you're moving your hips their full distance and the shoulders can't keep up, and that's how we end up turning in a circle on your mat. So if you've been having that issue, uh, that's what I would say to think about first. Coming back around for round two. I do like wall sits, but they're any exercise that is a held exercise presents a very specific type of challenge, okay? And we don't think about this until we're sort of in the thick of it. But when we're doing most other exercises, like when I'm doing something like these shrimps, yeah, it's intense. And I'm definitely feeling the engagement in my core Absolutely, but there's so much movement, there's so many components that I'm really focusing in on and checking in on, and so it keeps my brain a little bit distracted from uh, some of the worst of the sensation, which is nice, and it is honestly very helpful. Whereas when we're doing a held position, like a plank or like a wall sit, I don't have anything else to focus on. I am not moving. I have to keep breathing, but otherwise I wanna just hold this position. And so I have nothing to distract me from the uh, discomfort, basically. And it's not something that we necessarily think about until we are doing those held positions. And some of them are gonna be easier for us than others depending on your, where your strong points are in terms of muscle strength. Uh, some of them may feel easier than others, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's one of those things that, you know, no matter how long I do this, it always catches me by surprise. I'm like, oh, hang on, this feels really intense. Uh, why is everything vibrating? Let me try and breathe a little bit more deeply. And yes, breathing, I know, I'm harping on it a lot for these wall sits, but it's so important because your muscles are still working super hard. Even though we're not moving, they are engaged and they are working. You can tell because they're vibrating like that. They're hanging on and they need that oxygen. They did not stop needing that oxygen just because 
It's an isometric muscle action and not an eccentric or concentric one. Uh, all right, finishing out strong with that last round of shrimps, going back and forth, feeling that core engagement. We love that core engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 12, 11, 10, so 10 seconds left. Moving back and forth along the mat. I'm gonna try and put my puzzle pieces back together a little bit. Like this was a smart idea on my part. It wasn't a bad idea, but it still, it's not a perfect setup. That's okay. Ugh, okay. Water time. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. All right, my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at us moving through class. We're all ready to our last pyramid. This is fantastic. Holy crap. And then you get to do all the things that we enjoy doing after workouts. You get to keep hydrating, get to take that post, that celebratory post-workout shower, the best shower of the day, uh, getting some food in, starting to replenish those glycogen stores. Super important stuff, my friends. All right. But before we get there, we have to do our last pyramid and then stretch. <laughs> yeah, we're not there yet. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there very soon. So final pyramid, last eight minutes of class, three remaining exercises. You're gonna need a chair for one of them. So I'm just getting that set up first. I, yeah, I need to, I, I recommend having it set against the wall if you can, um, just for some added stability. But the first exercise is an old favorite, it's toe squats. So we have our feet hip width apart. We're trying to keep our backs as straight up and down as possible. We start to squat down, go, oh, well, I can't go any farther than this. So I'll let my heels come off the ground, come all the way down to this bottom position, and then stand back up. Again, letting the heels come back to the ground naturally. So I'm not actively lifting or lowering my heels at any point. They're just letting them move as a natural consequence of the exercise itself. So we have toe squats, then we do our chair tricep. So if I'm sitting on this chair, I, have, I want to put my hands on the edge of the seat with my fingertips pointing out away from the chair. And I want to take my butt forward like this, and then I'm just going to lower myself down, keeping those elbows in towards the body, and then pushing up and down and up. So kind of a reverse push up there. <laughs> and then finally, ankle reaches. So legs straight up and down, and I'm going to contract the abdominals to lift my shoulders and chest off the ground, reach one hand to the outside of the opposite ankle and other side and just go back and forth. And our ankle reaches, again, uh, because they go back and forth, you're gonna need to do 22, 16, 10, all right? But this is our last eight minutes, my friends. This is our last pyramid. Everybody on your mats. Eight minutes starts now. Woo! Oh, and our toe squats. Y'all know how much I love this exercise. We haven't done a ton of it in this last month. Like we've had it in the, ooh, my knee is feeling things today. Uh, we've had it in uh, these pyramids, but you know, we haven't done our really long runs of toe squats. So remembering that you want to be in control of the movement the whole time. Uh, so what that really particularly means is never letting gravity take control. You don't want to be bouncing when you come down to this bottom position, okay? Because that's going to put some really nasty pressures on your knees. And we don't want to do that. We want to protect our knees. Our knees are so important. We love them. Um, so you want to be in control of the movement all the way down and all the way up. Engaging the core is that stabilizing muscle group is gonna really help with that. It's also gonna help with the balance because we get down to the bottom and it's basically a balance position up on the balls 
of my feet. And so I'm trying to manage this balance with just my feet and ankles. And if my torso is able to go all over the place and move where, willy nilly wherever it wants to, that's going to make their job much more difficult. So engaging the core the whole way just helps to stabilize everything, give it a nice center to hold on to, makes it easier to maintain that balance. Just everything becomes easier. And then our chair triceps, speaking of easier, like, you know, this is, I guess, technically an equipment exercise, but, you know, again, from an accessibility standpoint, everybody has chairs. Um, so, and it doesn't have to be a chair. You could be doing this off of a staircase, you know? You could be doing this off of a small bench or a crate. Uh, just something that you can put your hands on the edge like that, lower down, and push back up. And again, we don't want those elbows to fan away, okay? So we want to make sure that we're keeping them pulled in the whole time. And just really, it, what that does is it focuses the work on the triceps, and that's generally how I like to uh, focus in those exercises. There are so many other styles of push-up. To be clear, push-up and, and tricep work. Like, um, I know I'm talking about push-ups and we're doing chair triceps, but it just came into my head. Like, there are so many different types of them. I do but one type. Uh, it's the type that I prefer. It's the type that I want us to be doing, but if you learn other styles of push-up, that doesn't mean that they're wrong. It just means that that's not the one that we're doing in class. Um, and then our ankle reaches, always remembering that we want those feet going straight up into the air. You may need to bend your knees because it's really hard to maintain this straight leg position. If you need to bend your knees, that's fine. When you bend them, pull them towards your chest so that my feet are still in the same general place and pointing up towards the ceiling, rather than bending my feet farther away, okay? So you want the soles of your feet pointing straight up towards the ceiling, even if you add a little bit of a bend in the knee. And that's so that you can reach up and hit that ankle up there, even if it's here. It, you want to actually have the capacity to touch the ankle, which I can't do if it's all the way up there. Ah, I can't get there. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're going for. All right, you are halfway through your eight minutes. Oh my goodness. I'm just gonna sit by the laptop and cheer people on at this point. Y'all know, y'all know the form. Y'all know the exercises. Y'all are hopefully luxuriating in this extra amount of time. Uh, and what a great month of programming April Powers was. I was really happy with that. And uh, I am excited to be on a little bit more of a regular schedule when it comes to our, uh, our big monthly or month long programs. So the next one that we're gonna do should be in July. Uh, and then uh, then, of course, we'll, I, I, I don't have a pithy name for it yet, but there'll be one in July. And then, of course, we'll come back around to Rocktober, everybody's favorite. Uh, and then one for January as well, which I could have done this year and I didn't because, uh, you know, there was a lot happening in January of 2021 and I didn't have the energy and that's fine. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, my friends. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, you've got two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes left, you have so much time. And if you are done, take this opportunity to hydrate. Mm -hmm. uh, and to, you know, pat yourself on the back, maybe you just flex in front of a mirror. <laughs> it's always fun to do that every once in a while, just be like, yeah, yeah, I'm so cool. Um, I don't know where we went just there, but you know, we want to appreciate the things that our body is capable of doing. Uh, and it's capable of doing so many things. And too frequently we get sort of focused in on the things that we haven't achieved yet that we really want to achieve. 
and we forget about the like really cool things that we have achieved. So, you know, if you're if you're struggling with that, I want you to try to take a step back and just make a checklist of, okay, what are the things about my fitness and the way that my body moves through space and its strength and its power that I really do appreciate? Um, and start there because we all need to get much better at appreciating our abilities and appreciating the things that we achieve. Even if we don't hit the exact specific metric that we were trying to achieve, we still made progress. And a lot of times we have this all or nothing mentality where it's like, oh, well, I didn't get this exactly perfect and so I failed. And that is a really destructive mindset. It's a really, and I, I get it, we all struggle with it, but uh, it's a really destructive mindset and it convinces us that there's no point in trying or in putting in the work because we didn't get to this exact one place where in reality, there's so many places that we can go and every bit of work that we do helps us to get there. So as we, as we head through these last 20 seconds, just take a second to be impressed by yourself because I'm impressed by you. You made it through April Powers. You ramped up. You got these pyramids down to six and a half minutes. That's freaking cool. And now you're reaping the reward and getting to rest. All right. Good job, everybody. All right. Um, we should do a little bit of stretching. Uh, it's always weird for me to stretch on the days when I haven't worked out hard because I am not warmed up enough to want to be doing super intensive uh, static stretching. But you have. So let's just uh, let's sit down on our mats and let's see here. Um, Let's start with our pretzel stretch first, all right? So it's got a lot of components to getting into the position. So leg one, we're going to let that knee fall open against the floor. We're going to take the foot to the outside of the opposite hip and just sort of nestle it in there. So that's leg one. My knee is on the floor and it's basically pointing straight forward right now. Leg two, I'm going to take the ankle to the outside of that opposite knee. And so this knee is pointing straight up towards the ceiling. All right, so that's leg two. Then we're gonna take the opposite arm from leg two and wrap it around that knee and just pull that knee in closer to our chest. So we're getting a nice stretch in the hip, in the outside of the hip, okay? Then I'm going to open my shoulder out, my other shoulder out, and twist and look behind myself. I'm going to make that easier by extending this arm. So I'm reaching towards the back, just twisting my spine, and really just getting a nice twist in there, okay? And let's take, let's take just two deep breaths here, all right? Here we go. That's one. And two. And then come back around to the center. And then we're going to pull this ankle up onto the knee. Flex the foot. That's going to help protect this knee right here. And then we're just going to fold over and get an even deeper stretch in that hip. Okay? So. Just fold forward, try to shake your head out a little bit to make sure you're not clenching those neck muscles. You can rest your head on your shin bone, all right, just to make that a little easier. And let's take four deep breaths here. Here we go, okay? That's one. That's two.
That's three. And four. All right, back up. Let the ankle just come off the knee there. Send that leg in front of you. Bring the other leg to meet it. Shake those knees out a little bit. And let's go for the other side. So, leg one, knees against the floor. Heels on the outside of the opposite hip. Leg two, knees pointing up towards the ceiling. Foot is on the other side of the opposite knee. Take that arm, pull that knee into your chest, getting that nice hip stretch right there. Reach the other arm out and behind you, getting that twist into your spine. And let's take those two deep breaths. Here we go. That's one. And two, and then back towards the front. Bring this ankle up onto the knee, flexing the foot, and fold over. If you're really intense by that hip stretch, again, shake the head out a little bit or rest it on the shin, just so you know you're not clenching the neck muscles. And let's take those four deep breaths right here. Here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. That ankle off the leg, stretch it out, bring the other leg to meet it, shake out those knees. Yeah. And let's lay back on our backs, and bring our knees into our chest, and just wrap our arms around them, okay? So you can grab the opposite elbows, you can rock back and forth if you want to, or just stay still, sort of feel that stretch in the hips and then we're going to extend one leg along the floor bring this knee across the body and so we get another nice twist in the spine you want to keep your shoulders flat against the floor okay which is particularly hard for this shoulder back here so what we're going to do is we're going to look away from this knee and that's going to help the shoulder stay flat against the floor. And let's take those four deep breaths. Here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. Look back up towards the ceiling. Bring that knee back into the chest, other knee to meet it. Again, wrapping those arms around them to pull them really close in. And then other leg extends along the floor. Bring that knee across. You may get some pops along your spine, a nice at-home chiropractic adjustment, keeping those shoulders flat against the floor, looking away from the knee to help facilitate that. And let's take those four deep breaths. Here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. Knee 
back into the chest, all our knee to meet it. Uh, and now we rock back and forth a little bit. Sort of massage the lower back. And we're done. Yeah! Woo! Oh, man. Yay! Oh, well, thank you for coming to class. I'm very glad you enjoyed it. Oh, my goodness. Good class, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I always love starting Saturdays this way. It is an absolute joy. And April Powers was so much fun. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Um, hello, June. Good to meet you. <laughs> uh, thank you for thank you for introducing June to, to the stream. Yay. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, just so much fun. So much fun. I really appreciate getting to do this with all of y'all. Um, and yes, next week is uh, a full on stream rest week. So if I can figure out how to do watch parties, I will try to run, you know, VODs on the stream at the usual time. But um, at the very least, I will message out like, here's a good VOD for you to be able to do today so that you can still do VODs at the usual time. Um, and I will be back again on, I don't even know what the date is going to be, but I'll be back again, not, not this coming week, but the week after, uh, with our usual schedule, with our Friday classes switched to 5 p.m. Mountain Time rather than 6 p.m. Mountain Time. And I'll message all of this out, but uh, oh, yes, don't worry, like, if... If the coming week is a good week for you to do a rest week as well, then rock on, join me, join me. And if uh, it is not your designated rest week, then definitely take advantage of the VODs, um, which are, you know, they're always uploaded on Sundays. Yes, I can count time. <laughs> oh man, I think I need some breakfast. My, my brain is starting to short circuit. Um, but yes, yeah, so there will be no class in the coming week. I will tweet out and message out on Facebook VODs that people can do for the appropriate classes on the appropriate days. Um, if I figure out a watch party situation, I will let you know. Um, but otherwise, we will be back again in the following week with our usual schedule. So Tuesdays at 545 uh, for perpetual motion, the class where we never stop moving. Wednesdays at 430 for Jump Around, a weekly cardio class. Fridays, uh, now at 5 p.m., not 6 p.m., for Functional Home Fitness, where we do weight training using objects you can find around the house, and Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. for the weekend kickoff. So I look forward to seeing you all back here again after my rest week. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All those handles will be in my end cards, but they are all variations on Blanche Case Fitness, my YouTube channel is where I upload all the VODs from these streams, so you never have to miss a class, even if you can't make the live cast, so definitely head over there and subscribe. If you want to help support me financially in making these streams, I have a coffee account for one-time donations, or as several people have done today, you can subscribe to this channel if you have the ability to support a little more long-term. Either way, your donations are always very much appreciated. And if you want to help me keep growing this community and this channel, then please tell your friends, loved ones, co-workers, um, anybody looking for an awesome class. I stream four days a week. We have a wonderful community here and we're taking care of ourselves and each other. And I just think that's wonderful. So make sure to hydrate, make sure to get some food, make sure to take that celebratory post-workout shower. And I will see all of you back here again a week from Tuesday. Well, have a great day and have a great week. <laughs>